Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, God Almighty, whom all blessings flow. Good evening. I pray that everyone had a blessed and a wonderful day today. Truly, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Had a little technical difficulty. My computer decided to restart itself at the last minute when I was going to go live. But we're on tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God for His grace being sufficient, His presence in our midst tonight, His loving kindness better than life itself. God is good. His mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for this day that He allowed us to make it through. There have been some challenging things that we have to deal with throughout the day, some, some mental, some emotional, some physical, some spiritual. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter what you go through. You have to remind yourself that you are more than a conqueror and you're victorious through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We're living in a time where too many people are falling away from the faith. We have to know ourselves that we're anchored in Christ Jesus not to be moved. It's easy to be swayed to turn away from your faith when things are not working out in your, in your favor. But I encourage you tonight. Resist the devil. Submit to God. And the enemy will have to flee with his negative thoughts. His undoctrinized emotions, things that come against you that's not of God's will. God has the power, he has the ability to deliver and set you free from anything that tests your faith. Greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. You have to know that you have the greater one living inside of you, that you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, Father, tonight I thank you for your presence in our midst tonight. Lord. I thank you for your loving kindness, better than life itself. Tonight, Lord God, I ask that you speak to our hearts by divine revelation. Give us wisdom, understanding, insight into the mysteries of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Change our attitudes. Change our minds. Change our directions to follow your will and be obedient to the call upon our lives to walk worthy of the vocation what we have been called. Nice, Father God, tonight that you, Father God, make our hearts pliable to receive the engrafted word of faith and able to save our souls. Forgive us for our sins, known and unknown, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Come into our hearts tonight, O God, and refresh us, revive us, restore us. Sit on the throne of our heart as King as we learn to listen and obey your voice. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen again. To God be the glory for all the things he has done for us. Hallelujah. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. On the Lord, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind serving. I don't mind serving, I don't mind serving, serving the Lord. I don't mind serving, I don't mind serving, I don't mind serving, serving the Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind praising, I don't mind praising, praising the Lord, I 
don't mind praising, and don't mind praising, and don't mind praising, praising the Lord. I don't mind praising, I don't mind serving, I don't mind blessing, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Amen, amen, amen again. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to wait on the Lord and the word says, be of good courage. And he will strengthen thine heart. In the midst of discouragements, in the midst of troubles, in the midst of trials and tests, in the midst of your going through, as you learn how to wait on the Lord, trust in his word, hear his voice speaking to you. He has the power, he has the ability to cause you to mount on wings like an eagle and soar above everything that comes in opposition to you to cause you to soar above it like an eagle in a storm. He rises above the storm because he knows there's peace above the storm and he just glides with his wings in the presence of the Lord. I encourage you tonight, allow the Lord to increase your strength when you feel like you have no might. Allow the Lord to empower you to stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. I guarantee, but they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up upon wings of eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk, hallelujah, and not faint, says the Lord. Amen. I pray you be enriched and encouraging your spirit tonight. Whatever you're going through, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We're going to get into our lesson tonight. I pray that you're ready for it, that you're excited. Last week, we were talking about Christ's condemnation to the church at Thyatira. We talked about how he encourages the church. He, he praises the church. He blessed them because they did things right in the presence of God. But the one accusation he had against them is that they tolerated the Jezebel spirit to creep in to their church. The seducing, manipulating, the controlling, the deceptive spirit caused them to commit spiritual fornication and adultery, to turn against God. And God said, this is the fault I have against you. He rebuked them for tolerating the heretical, the heresies, teachings of Jezebel and paganism, father of the religions. You have to know who you are your allegiance, your covenant, you have to know your vow that you made to the Lord and not break it. It's better to not make a vow to the Lord and then not to keep it. When you don't keep your vow, you allow yourself to be in danger of the judgment of God. So tonight we're going to pick up where we left off last week talking about the attributes of the flesh, of the spirit of whoredom. Read Hosea chapter 5 verse 4. It talks about this in, in Hosea. How Hosea, God told him to marry a prostitute. And in so doing, God told him that he was going to redeem Israel from her fornication. To bring them back to their allegiance to following God. 
So tonight we're going to get into our book. We left off after speaking about the attributes. I'm just going to refresh over the attributes of the spirit of whoredom. And then we're going to go into the rest of the lesson. God had a problem with the church of Thyatira because they allowed the spirit of horror not just enter the church but to manifest in the church. People think when it comes to horror let me look up something. I'm going to show you something here. Give me one second here. Horror is a prostitution or promiscuous sexual activity. Whoredom is prostitution or promiscuous sexual behavior. The spirit of whoredom, when it enters into the church, it brings a violation against God because it causes your heart to seek after spiritual fornication, spiritual adultery, seeking other gods, becoming intertwined in a sinful relationship with sinful people, which in turn become prostituting your body lying down with other people and causing their spirit to become intertwined with your spirit. When their spirit enters into relationship with you, the word tells us he him joins himself with a spirit of prostitution or a whore becomes one spirit with that person. Knowing that every person you lie with, you allow all those spirits and every individual to intertwine with your spirit. And you wonder why you're messed up mentally. You wonder why your heart is prone to do evil. It's because you allow the spirit of whoredom a prostitution to enter to your heart. You might say, well, I'm not standing on the corner selling my body. I'm not going into the, to the taverns and different places selling my body. But you give it to the spirit of prostitution because you give yourself that's supposed to be sacred and devoted to God to another person. Every time you find yourself Get into the spirit of prostitution. You go a whoring after other gods. And that's the problem God had with Israel. They went a whoring after other gods. They became intertwined in relation with other gods. And God detests that. It became an abomination to God. We talked about unfaithfulness and adultery. Infidelity. In a marriage, it's when you allow yourself or your mate to go and have a relationship with somebody outside of the marriage. It's called infidelity, unfaithfulness, adultery. We commit spiritual adultery every time we allow ourselves to get into a relationship with idol worship, with unclean spirits to come into your heart and pervert you and cause you to turn away from your marriage relationship with God. As a child of God, you are married to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're married. If you don't realize you're married to the Lord, You'll find yourself whoring after other gods. 
In Christianity, listen to this. The idea of being married to Christ is a metaphor for the relationship between God and his people and the relationship between Christ and the church. As a child of God, you are married to Jesus Christ and you should not allow any other person to come into your life to cause you to turn away from Christ. Listen to this. The imagery and symbolism of marriage is applied to Christ and the body of believers known as the church. The church is compromised. I mean, correct. The church is comprised of those who have trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and have received eternal life. Christ, the bridegroom, has sacrificially and lovingly chose the church to be his bride. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27. Just as there was betrothal periods in the Bible times during which the bride and the groom were separated until marriage, so is the bride of Christ separated from the bridegroom during the church age. Her responsibility during the betrothal period is to be faithful to him. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. We are responsible for loving our wives as a relationship with Christ. It symbolizes the same relationship. He says, Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor. That means holiness. Without spot or wrinkle. And any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. It is so important as a child of God to stay purified, to walk in your holy garments, in your Christly image until Christ comes again. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2 says, For I feel a divine jealousy for you. Since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. That means without blemish, without being touched, without spots. Ephesians 5.24 Now as, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. So your life is to be devoted to following Christ. No matter what comes in your life, you are responsible to uphold the standards of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life and in your relationship with Christ. Spirit, soul, and body prostitution. He who joins himself with a harlot become one flesh with that spirit. You join spirit, soul, and body. Anytime you give in to another spirit that's outside of God's spirit, you become a spiritual prostitute and become chronically dissatisfied. You're never satisfied with pleasing your flesh. You gain false satisfaction every time you give into the spirit of adultery and prostitution. Love of money is the root of all evil. 
that the word tells us. The love of money is the root of all evil. Every time you allow yourself to get engulfed in a satisfaction that's false of pleasing your flesh, you allow yourself to be distracted from serving the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when you find yourself lost in translation of the spirit because you become confused and discombobulated because you're listening to all other voices in the flesh of the enemy. Look at this. For the love of money is the root of all evil. And while some have coveted after it. Listen to this. This is really good. Because it brings conviction to a child of God who claims to be a child of God. For the love of money is the root. It's the main source of deception which leads to evil. And while some have coveted after it. You know what the covet means? I want what you got for myself. What's yours, I want to be mine. So I take your wife, I take your husband, because I want them for myself. So the means committing adultery, fornication, cause you to sin against God, I want you. I don't care if you're a married man or married woman. I want you for myself. I want you to leave your husband, leave your wife. Follow me. So I covet after things you have, and I want it for my own prized possession. In the process, they have erred from the faith. Mm, mm, mm. They have erred from the faith. You know what that means? They turn from the faith. They were led astray from the faith. There was a deception from following the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Wow. All because I coveted money. You got people in leadership, pastors, bishops, apostles, don't care about the sheep. All I want you to do is give so I can live in a mansion, drive a Rolls Royce, drive a Mercedes Benz, drive the best Cadillac, drive a Maserati. I want you to give so I can live a satisfactory life. I don't care if you get yours or not. I want myself to have everything I want in life at the expense of the sheep. And you know what? They think they're going to get away with it. But what profit the man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So the more I gravitate to the spirit of horror, prostitution, adultery, unfaithfulness, never being satisfied, I pierce myself with sorrow. And I cause the judgment of God to be invoked upon me because of rebellion. If you are misleading God's people as a shepherd, woe to the shepherds who lead my people astray. God told Jeremiah to prophesy that any person who calls himself a shepherd and lead my people astray, God said this judgment gonna fall upon them. Listen to this. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 23, verse 1. Let me turn to it on. Second. 
so you can see this. I want y'all to see this. Jeremiah 23.1. I'm going to put it on the screen. There you go. It says, Woe be unto the pastors, shepherds, the leaders, the bishops, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, pastors. Woe, that word woe means you better pay attention. Listen intently. Be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Woe. Listen. Judgment coming. Listen to this. Verse 2. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. Look at this. Woe be to those who are set to feed God's people, but take no concern to do them good. Here is the word of comfort to the neglected sheep. Though only a remnant of God's flock is left, he will find them out. And they should be brought back to their former habitation. So you might have been scattered. You might have been church hurt. God says, I'm going to restore your former habitations. Christ is spoken as a branch from David's family. He is righteous himself. And through him, all his people are made righteous. Christ should break the usurp power of Satan. That means, you know what usurp is? He wants to drain your authority, drain your strength. Use you up so he can't use you no more. In all the spiritual seed of believing Abraham and praying Jacob shall be protected and he shall be saved from the guilt and dominion of sin. Ooh, that is so good. My God, my God, my God. So in the days of Christ's government, in the soul, the souls dwell at ease. No, you be at peace. He is here, he is here spoken of as the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Sick Canoe. The Lord of righteousness. He is also our righteousness as no creature could be. His obedience unto death is the justifying righteousness of believers in their title to heavenly happiness and their sanctification as the source of all personal obedience is the effect of their union with him not the supply of his spirit everything you need but seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you by his name, every true believer shall call him and call upon him. Christ has died, yea, rather, is risen again. And we have taken him as our Lord. This righteousness which he brought, which he wrought out of sanctification of the law and justice becomes ours. So you're closed in his righteousness. Hallelujah, glory to God. Being free, being a free gift to us through the Spirit of God who put it upon us and closed us with it enables us to lay hold upon it and claim it and interest in it. 
That means you gotta be interested in God's righteousness. You gotta want God's righteousness. You need to know God's righteousness. The Lord our righteousness is a sweet name to a convinced sinner, to the one that has felt guilt of sin in his conscience, seeing his need, that righteousness, and the worth of it. The great, this great salvation is far more glorious than the former deliverances of his church. That is so awesome. Oh my God, that is so awesome. May our souls be gathered to him and be found in him. So God says, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whither I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds their former habitations, and they shall be fruitful and increase. That's a promise. That's a covenant. That's a vow. Then he says, I will set up, oh my God, shepherds over them who shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, I will raise unto David's righteousness a righteous branch. A king shall reign and prosper and shall execute injustice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell in safety. And this is his name. Whereby he shall be called, hallelujah, glory to God, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that they shall say no more. The Lord liveth, who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, who brought up and led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries where I have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. Verse 9, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All the bones shake. And I'm like a drunken man and like a man whom wine has overcome. Let me drunk. Because the Lord and because of his word of his holiness. The land is full of adulterers. For because of cursing, the land mourneth. Listen to that. So because of curses. <coughs> Excuse me. My God, my God. He said the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. And their course is evil. And their force is not right. Verse 11, for both prophet and priest are profane, corrupted, perverted. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. Therefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in darkness, and they shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring, listen to this, evil upon them, even the years of their visitation, says the Lord. See, God is not playing with the church today. If you think you can call yourself a pastor, apostle, an evangelist, a bishop, a teacher, a prophet, and not live in God's holiness, you invoking God's judgment to come upon you. We, we, you know one thing God showed me today? I was doing laundry today. And as I was doing laundry, God just ministered peace in my heart because today I was consecrated. We were consecrated for seven days in our church. And as I was doing my laundry, I was hearing God's voice speak to me about peace. But he also told me that people 
have erred in the faith because they refuse to repent. Too many people are in bondage. Too many people, they make excuses. Too many people have gone astray from the body of Christ because they allow a tormenting, a corrupt, confused spirit to enter to their minds. Therefore, it gets into their heart. And as they engage in this Confucian spirit, it causes a seducing spirit to manipulate and control their mindset, to keep them in darkness and not in the light. We as God's people need to recognize your own faults, your bad habits, your strongholds, your issues, and stop justifying and making excuses the reason why you keep making the same mistake. If you don't listen to the voice of God, allow the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to fall upon you, you're deceiving yourself. There's a way that seems right unto man, but the end of the way is of death. If you don't get to the place in yourself to get into your word, allow the word of God to get into your heart, would go into the mindset. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Look at this. Look at this. I'm going to show you something. When God began to speak, he began to bring conviction. But he also brings a promise. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. But before verse 8. Verse 6. God commissioned Moses. To pass the mantle to Joshua. Or Yeshua. As some people call it in the Hebrew language. Yeshua. Which means Christ. Messiah. God told him. Be strong and of good courage. But before he spoke this, go up here to verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, or Nun, Moses minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Sometimes the people you trust in become dead to you because God has to remove them out of your life sometimes. Because we get too comfortable in relying on other people. We get too comfortable in letting them lead us. We never grow spiritual muscles to lead ourselves and our purpose, our ambitions, our callings, desire to follow the Lord because we become comfortable with a spiritual pacifier. They become your spiritual pacifier. And you're still sucking on a bottle, never maturing. So Joshua, Joshua gets a command from God that Moses is dead. God says to Joshua, Now therefore, rise up. Stop crying. Dry the tears from your eyes. Bring yourself back together. Compose yourself. You're discombobulated right now because Moses is dead. But come to a sound mind. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I to give them. Even the children of Israel. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot should tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness, even to this Lebanon, even to this great river, the river Euphrates, and all the Hittites, the land of the Hittites, he says, 
and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun to be your borders. So in other words, what I'm giving you does not have a set boundary. Everything I'm giving the children of Israel is for their possession beyond boundaries. Then he goes on, verse 5, There should not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee. God promises. You might feel that God has abandoned you. You might feel that God let you down. Sometimes God tells you no about certain things in your life that he knows you're not ready to handle. But it does not mean he's not going to give it to you. Just because something is delayed does not mean it's not going to happen. He said, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Then he tells him, be strong and of good courage. Be courageous. Put on some spiritual muscle. Gain some strength. Gain some stamina to stand up against your enemy. To trust God in his word. The thou mayest observe to do according to all of the law. With Moses my servant commanded thee. Observe, take note, pay attention, record in your heart. All according to the law, the commandments of God. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. That thou mayest prosper whither thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. He says this after he encourages Joshua to be strong and courageous, very courageous. To observe according to all the law, to keep God's commandments, don't turn it to right or to left, but you're going to prosper everywhere you go. Only if it's predicated on verse 8. Do not let the book of the law depart out of your mouth. The commandments of God. The law of God. The decrees of God. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do all according to that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9, he reassures him. Have not I commanded thee? Didn't he just give him a command? He did. He gave him a command. Be strong and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God, who is your God? Who are you serving? Who is your allegiance to? Who are you trusting and depending on? Is Jehovah, Jehovah God your God? For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Let's go back to our book. So he says here, Fornication, idolatry, excessive appetites. We talked about these attributes last week. Fornication, idolatry, anything that takes the place of God in your life as an idol becomes your God. You neglect the true God for a false God. Excessive appetite, you never satisfy what you have. You want more, you want more, you want more, you want more to become spiritual anorexis and never satisfy. So you regurgitate what you have. 
any person that's anorexic never maintain substance in that body because they feel they're overweight so they regurgitate, they spit it up. Like a child, like a cow that chews his curd. And he throws it back up. And then chews it again. Because the enemy wants you to regurgitate the word of God and not maintain the word of God that's going to build your spiritual muscles. Going to put some substance on your body. Cause you to grow. To be strengthened, to empowered. So, as we talked about this last week, worldliness is all part of these other attributes. The mentality of an individual that's the absence of God has a heart of worldliness. Most Westerners today do not bow down to physical idols. But whatever comes between us and our relationship with the Lord is considered by him to be an idol. Even religion, if it supersedes our relationship with Christ, can become an idol. Remember last week I talked about this? We had the Presbyterians, the Methodists, the Muslim faith, Jehovah's Witness, the Baptist, the Catholics, the Apostolic of Christ, the Church of God in Christ, and all these different religions. Who is against other religions? Because if you're not following their religion, you're not following the true God. That becomes an idol. Because you put more confidence and faith in your leader, in these religious uh, settings or arenas you will eventually neglect your God and follow everything that pastor tells you as if God is speaking to you and not God speaking to you himself that's why it's so important to study your word the enemy is sly if he cannot seduce us into immorality that's pure wickedness he entices us with religion and legalism. Legalism is a set of rules and regulations that defies God's word. Religion becomes heresy because it goes against God and causes you to follow a system instead of following God's truth and His righteousness. We must remember that we do not have allegiance to a church. We have an allegiance to Christ. I will say it again. We must remember. Take record. Record it in your spiritual database. Take notes of it. We must not give into allegiance to a church. But allegiance to Christ. But be committed to following the church. Who follows Christ. The difference is. You can have a religion outside of Christ and don't follow Christ. But if your allegiance is to Christ first, then you can have an allegiance to your church who follows Christ. Then I don't mind listening to my pastor. I don't mind listening to my bishop. I don't mind listening to my apostle. I don't mind listening to the prophets and the teachers. An evangelist who has an allegiance, who is devoted to serving the Lord Jesus Christ in the body of Christ. Our first loyalty is to who? To Him. And it say to your money, and it say to your possessions, and it say to your family, to your friends, to your church. Your first allegiance, your loyalty, is to Jesus Christ. We are to be God pleasers. We are to be God pleasers, not man pleasers. We are to be committed. 
to Christ, not to dead works. It's very important as a child of God to realize that we are not to be dictators of the flesh when we neglect our Christ. We are to be devoted and committed to Jesus Christ. Whatever dominates us has the first place in our lives. And the Lord does what? Consider it idolatry. Whatever takes control of your destiny, your future, your life, God says it becomes idol worship. We are instructed to keep our eyes upon Jesus and behold him only. Look unto the hills which come your help. Your help come from the Lord Jesus Christ who made the heaven and earth. It says to God who made heaven and earth. Follow us on the Holy Ghost. We have to be committed. The word says the just should live by faith. Are you just tonight? That means you've been justified. You've been made right and right standing with God. You've been acquitted. You've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. You've been sanctified through the Holy Ghost. To where you are to be committed to live according to the standards of faith. For by faith are you saved through grace and not to yourselves, is a gift of God. Not of works, that's any way should boast. For faith is the one only of God's attributes. Faith is the one of the godly attributes that defeats the seductive enticements. Your faith in God the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Your faith is connected to the power source who has the ability to strip the enemy of his power in your life. To break the backbone of seductive enticement of the spirit of Jezebel. Our faith must be in God and its ability to feed, to nourish, and care for us. Trusting in money, other relationships, other activities is idolatry. Anything else that takes the place of God in your life is idolatry. By trusting in his ability to care for us, we lift Jesus higher. And that always defeats the enemy. As you lift up the Savior by praising him and glorifying him, acknowledging who he is, living by the standards of the word and by faith, you glorify God and defeat the enemy. This is the way to tear down the enemy from his high place. Trusting in money, of the relationships, of activities, sinful desires, evil passions of the flesh becomes idolatry. And as we begin to magnify the Lord Jesus, to lift up the Savior, he will defeat the enemy in your behalf. He already done it on the cross. Jesus already defeated your enemy. This seductive spirit already been defeated. But you have to know it's been defeated for you. Because the pride is broken. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life has already been broken. And the enemy has been stripped of its power that has control of your mind. It's up to you to make a decision in yourself. 
I'm going to follow God's word. Now, if you stand on the word of truth tonight, and you know for yourself that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, you defeat your adversary. And as you learn how to trust in God's word, the power of the word of God defeats the enemy in your thought life, in your heart, in your attitude, in your emotions, in your feelings. It's defeated by the power of the blood of the Lamb and the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee you will begin to see the victory in your life manifest through our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to see victory. I'm going to see the victory. For the power belongs to the Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the power belongs to the Lord. Oh, no weapon formed against me would prosper. Every tongue that rises will not prevail. I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story ends. I know how this story is. Cause I'm gonna see the victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the power belongs to the Lord. I'm gonna see the victory. I'm gonna see the victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. So when you know the battle belongs to the Lord and you trust God and his word, you will see a victory. You will overcome. You will rise above every situation that rises against you by the power of the Holy Spirit. As you learn how to surrender. The word tells us, resist it. I think it's drink James 317, I believe it is. So resist it, submit to God, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. If you learn how to submit to God in his word, I guarantee that you will see the victory in your life your circumstances, your situation, everything about you begin to prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. I'm a living witness. It works. Submitting to God causes you to prosper financially, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Everything about you begin to prosper as you learn how to submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see the victory manifest in your life. Everything about you begins to change for the better. Because we trust in the Lord with all our hearts. And lean not to our own understanding. But in all our ways we acknowledge him. He truly directs our path. Amen. So I want to encourage you tonight. Get into your word. Get into your word. I say it each week. Get into your word, get into your word, get into your word. Allow the Holy Spirit to feed you like a shepherd feeds his flock. And I guarantee you, when you get into word, something begins to manifest in your life because the word has the power to overcome anything the devil brings against you. Uh, James 4, 7. James 4, 7. It tells us, Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. James 4, 7. It says, ver, ver, actually to go to verse 6. We're going to close with this scripture. It says, but he giveth more grace. Therefore he says, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. But he, God, 
give us more grace. What for he says, God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you center and purify your hearts. You double-minded. Being double-minded means contrary, going against God's word. When the enemy comes to test you and to try and prove you, instead of listening to the Holy Spirit, listen to the enemy, then you listen to God, then you go back and listen to the enemy, you're double-minded. You're not sound in your thought life. Once you become sound in your thought life, you only listen to one voice. That'd be the voice of God speaking to you to overpower all other voices that speaks to you that cause you to doubt God's word. Amen. So Lord God, tonight I thank you and I praise you for the opportunity, oh God, to share your word. I pray that it bring conviction to all of our hearts where the spirit of horror, spirit of fornication, adultery, lack of satisfaction, idolatry, excessive appetites are into our hearts. I pray you purge it out, God, and purify us as we desire to be purified in our hearts and in our thought life, in our attitudes, in our lives, to follow you and be clothed in your righteousness and your holiness. Now, thank you, Lord God, for hearing us, changing us, and delivering us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So tonight, I encourage you, as always, allow the Holy Spirit to bring conviction in your heart. If areas in your life that need to change, in your thought life need to change, in your mouth that needs to change, your life that needs to change, allow the Holy Spirit to do His perfect work in you, to purify and perfect you, and make you righteous in God's standing. And allow the Lord to close you in His holiness, that He will get control and authority of your life. So as always, if you don't know Jesus, Lord and Savior, the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Romans 10, 9 and 10, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the mouth confession made with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. It's up to you to make a decision. You might be a backslider and gone astray. It's up to you to make a sound decision tonight. Give your heart over to Jesus Christ. Allow him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. All you have to do is pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I want everybody to pray with me tonight. Those who are listening, those who might see it later on, pray this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge God. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. And done this evil in thy sight. That you will hear and be justified in your judgment. Forgive me God. For all my sins. Known and unknown. And cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart. And be my Lord and Savior. I thank you, Lord, for giving me another chance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, 
The whole host of heaven is rejoicing over you as a backslider, as a newborn believer. And they're rejoicing because you made a decision to be recommitted and to be committed to following Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of your life. Now find your Bible-based teaching church somewhere to get into the church to learn about your new relationship with Christ. I encourage you, don't allow the enemy to continue to seduce and manipulate you to living in sin. But as you, as you just repented and gave your life to Jesus, follow him. Make a decision to follow Jesus Christ from this day forward. Amen. So until next week at 6 o'clock hour, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Until next week, God bless you. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Everyone who's on here tonight, God bless you. Thank you. Stay encouraged. Be enriched in your spirit and grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Until next week, God bless you. As always, Shalom means the peace, the love, the satisfaction of God, the blessing, the favor of God. Rest and abide in and through your life forevermore. Have a good night.